Okay, in this tutorial we're going to look at setting up our project settings, making sure our settings work, and setting up our home grid. So, underneath Customize, we want to go to Preferences. In Preferences, we want the Files tab, and then make sure Convert Local File Paths to Relative is selected. This is going to get rid of the drive um, when it looks for the file. It's just going to look at the file. If you leave this unchecked, then if you move to another computer and your file was on, let's say, the C drive, and now it's on a D drive, it won't be able to find the drive. So once we have that set up, we're going to go underneath File. And then we're going to go to Project. And if you want to set up a new project, then you click Create Default. If you want to make sure that an existing project is being used, then you're going to click Set Active Project. So for us, I'm going to create a default project, and it navigates to the last project you have. I'm going to navigate up where I'm keeping my 3D tutorial projects, and I'm going to create a new folder. And this I'm just going to name um, Setup. and now I'm selecting the folder. Now when I go to go file, save, so I want to name, so I'm going to hit save as, it should navigate to my documents inside the correct folder in the scenes folder. And if it, this doesn't work, sometimes it doesn't, you, you may need to navigate, but just check to see if it gives you the file um, path and make sure everything's set up properly. Otherwise, you'll end up with problems later. So now I'm just going to name this grid. Click Save. When you want to go and save updates, you're going to click, and you can just hit Save, and it'll overwrite the file you have. If you want to do an incremental save, which is the best way to do it, in case a file gets corrupt, you can at least go back to the last version. Then you click Save As, and now I have Grid, and if I click the plus, it saves it. So now when we go back and hit save as again, you'll see that it saved it as grid 01. And if I click plus again, it's going to save as grid 02. So this is going to give you a nice incremental save. Now that we have that set up, I want to use the um, just the default settings for my scale. So I'm just going to hold down Alt-W to go full screen on the perspective. I just prefer that view. Under Customize, I'm going to click and I'm going to do Unit Setup. And we're just going to talk about Unit Setup for a second. So your display units is how you're viewing when you make an object the size. By default, it gives you generic units. And they are defaulting to inches. So we can see that in here. So this is the way the system is reading the scale. So in here, when we click on system unit setup, you'll see that my unit, one unit, equals one inch. So I'm just going to click OK for that. And I'm going to leave it as generic. And now if I go into a box, and I'm just going to hit cube and say keyboard entry. If I type in 1 and hit create, now I get a 1 inch cube. So I get a 1 inch cube because it's making one unit. So if I want to have a larger cube, let's say a foot, I can type in 12, hit create, and now I have a 1 foot cube. If I want different sizes for my three dimensions, then I click on box. So let's say I want a one foot cube and I don't feel like typing it in 12. I can click one and then a comma, create, and now I have a one foot cube. So let's hide this one. You'll see that we have the one inside and then the one inch. So let's delete these. They all are the same. So you can go and do keyboard entry to 
get your box or cube, or of course we can go and drag out a cube. So I do want a one foot cube so we can check our grid size. So again, I'm just going to type in one, comma, create. Right now it's sitting on the origin. I want to scoot it over a little so that when I look at my size of my grid, I have a reference. So the grid is 10 units by 10 units by default. I want to change this to be one foot so it's easier for me to lay out something in feet. So for that, I'm going to go in, and there's two ways to get to it. Well, more than two. But I can go under Tools, and then down here you're going to see Grids and Snaps, Grid and Snap Feature, and it will bring up the Snaps, Options, Home Grid, and then User Grid. So that's one way, and the other is you can just right click on your snaps and it will bring up grid and snaps. So again I'm going to click on home grid. Here we have our grid spacing at 10. So 10 units being a unit is an inch. And if I pull out a little bit I have my um, major grid line set for 10. And my perspective grid only extends 7. So if I extend this 15 it's a little hard to see, but here are the major grid lines. So now every 10 I get a major grid line. Um, the major grid lines are again a little bit hard to see with the default coloring. But what I'm concerned about is the grid spacing. So I want to change this to 12 units, and now you'll see it matches with my one foot by one foot box. And this way I can quickly just click and drag to get a rough placement of my box and then go in and, and make corrections in the Modify tab to the, the scale. Okay, so that's fine for me. Down here, your settings, when I extend in the perspective view, my grid is staying the same. If you currently have your grid changing scale, which really annoys me, you could turn on these two checkboxes. So if I turn off the Inhibit Grid subdivisions below, and now I zoom in and out, you'll see that as I zoom in, it's creating more and more smaller boxes. And again, I, I don't find this useful. And then the second box is as I drag out, it keeps extending the size of the grid. So I don't like those. I just want to have one grid size that I can use as a reference. So that's where you would change those. We're going to take a look back at the unit setup. So we looked at making an inch, which is just the default size. Up here we can change it to metric. So if I click on metric, now we are using the metric units. So we can pick meters, centimeters. Depending on the scale, you don't want to go too large. You don't want to go to kilometers. If you go to kilometers, then it can't read you know, smaller units. So same thing with millimeters it won't be able to read larger units. So just kind of know what scale you want. And then for US, you can click and you can pick how it's reading. So here we have feet with fractal inches. We could pick decimal. Okay, so if I want to see a smaller subdivision, then I can, I can choose it here. So 32 should be fine for most things. And again, you can pick if your default is feet or inches. I just want to make people aware, when we talk about the U.S. standard, the U.S. standard is actually called the imperial measuring system. So we have the metric, and then we have the imperial. And a lot of people are unaware of that, but it's good to know what it is that you're using, so that's the imperial measuring system.